Hi, you're watching my Six String Journey. My name's Cypher, and on this channel, I am reviewing my lesson learning to play the electric guitar. My highs, my lows, reviews of all my lessons, gear that I'm using, just about everything to do with the journey. And today, I want to review very quickly with you my lesson 24, which was undertaken on the 5th of August 2020. We are on day 386 and roughly 111 hours of practice. Now I'm ditching the normal little intro that I have in my videos today just to see what happens with the stats on the channel, which is a bit of an experiment. And I'd be very grateful if you could take the time to comment below and just let me know whether you like just running straight into the video or whether you just like that little introduction. So, this lesson was last Wednesday. Um, we're now on Sunday, so I have done a little bit of practice. But the lesson was more just about reviewing where I was with Everybody Hurts, and in particular, picking out the individual notes without looking at the guitar. That's been the challenge, and quite a few of you have contacted me to say that's a really difficult technique to learn but it's a really valuable technique to learn and they're interested how quickly I can pick that up. I'm getting on okay. I have good days, I have bad days. For instance, the two days leading up to my lesson, it went really well. As soon as I wanted to show Michael what I could do in my lesson, it went badly. As soon as I put the camera on, it starts going badly. So, how it's going to go today on this video, I really, really don't know, but we will have a look. And that's been the main, the main emphasis. The lesson, again, was another one over Skype because uh, we're still coming out of lockdown in the UK. So it was still over Skype. The Skype audio and visual was pretty dire on Wednesday. I was hearing other, every other word that Michael was saying. Um, the Video, the audio and the video, it was, it was pixelated and just, just horrible. Um, there's no other way of saying it. It was less than ideal. And for that reason, we weren't really able to push on with the lesson in the way that I would have liked. I think um, we'll be able to do that once we're back to face-to-face uh, -face lessons. So for the moment, it's useful to have the lessons uh, it does keep your mind on the job and what you need to do and it, it gives you a waypoint in the journey. So something that you are looking to get this exercise done before the next lesson. Um, but I have to say that the more this lockdown goes on and the more that we do on Skype, uh, the more frustrating I, I am finding it. So it, it's not great, but it's where we are at at the moment. So it was a bit difficult to see Michael's fingering and, and the picking for the next part of this REM Everybody Hurt sequence. Um, he's hopefully going to be emailing that to me and then I will start to practice. For the moment, I'm just working on the single sheet, the one that is available for download from my Patreon page for those of you that are following along. Um, and it's, it's just that single page that we are working towards. And we're working more on just trying to get the picking strings as clean as possible and, and moving between them. Now, one of the things that did come up on the day is I found that I was really, really pressing the strings very, very hard. For some reason, when it's hot, I seem to press the strings much more than I do when it's cool. And I'm actually doing this video mid-afternoon on Sunday and it is really, really warm here. And I've just literally been playing for five or ten minutes and I've got very, very deep marks in my fingers um, just for, for playing and really hot. So I've moved my practicing more to very, very late in the evening and I do tend to get better results then. But um, hey-ho, we'll see how things go at the moment. But one of the things I was doing is my son was riding up um, quite high. Actually, I was playing with it almost up here. So right above the neck, which is really bad. So Michael's got me to bring my thumb around the back of the neck more. And that was more to do with when I was trying to play the A chord. I was um, fouling strings and muting strings all the time, which, which really wasn't great. Um, so just bringing my thumb around just rotates my wrist around a little bit more and it gets my fingers in, in a much better place. But I am still struggling from the E minor to the D change and that still 
continues to be a core change that I include in my practice. So sorry about that, um, people are cutting grass at the moment and my hay fever has kicked off and although I've taken antihistamine I'm afraid that my nose is streaming a little bit and during this video I am probably going to take the odd pause just to blow my nose and just clear myself up. Um, so I apologise for the, uh, the different breaks today. So one of the things that was quite interesting is as well as using the pick for this particular song. Um, I was watching a video the other night uh, where somebody was just using finger style and I thought well just for kicks we'll give that a go and I did actually show Michael and he was quite uh, he was quite impressed because apparently finger style is quite difficult um, but I don't play it very loud but with finger style um, I can do something like this Just something I was trying um, just a couple of nights before my lesson. I uh, haven't really done anything with it since the lesson, so that's the first time I've tried to sing finger style in the last you know three, three or four days. Um, but it was quite interesting just to see the difference with finger style and moving across the strings and the pick because with the finger styles is you can use your thumb for the um, sixth and the fourth string quite easily and then you can just line up these three fingers um, on the first second and third string and actually the, your fingers are pretty much in the right place to play those notes so I'm actually finding Finger style easier than the pick, but the lesson was all about the pick. So let's just see, for those of you that have been asking me, how I am getting on with skipping strings whilst using the pick. Now, uh, as I said, it's, it's quite hot at the moment. Um, when it's hot, my fingers get sticky and um, I don't tend to be able to play the guitar quite as well, um, but we'll just see where we are at at the moment. So wish me luck, here we go. So as you saw there, it better I think than it has been in previous videos. But I'm still occasionally from the G jumping down to the second um, string rather than the third, second, first. So that is something I'm doing less. So what I mean by that is um, when I'm on the G chord, so we are there. Very often what I'm doing is, and then I've run out of strings, um, but I am getting better at doing that.
<laughs> also frustrating. So the D to the G and the G to the D, I can run, run, run and run around in circles on that for ages. And when I get in the groove, when I get it going, it is so, so satisfying. It's brilliant. I love it. And then I think, okay, let's go from the G to the GF sharp. And normally, normally, I've got that. It's not quite so good today because I've got it on camera and I'm saying, hey, I've normally got that quite well, but... I can do it better than that. I really can do it better than that. change that's the one I've got to work on so yeah the, the, the D to G to D going round and round in circles is getting there and of course when you're playing the full sheet you've got what we got four eight ten eleven bars of, of just going around in circles so the majority of this page is that sequence and then it's just that last, the last five bars that I need to do more work on. Um, but really, really pleased. I mean, moving across the fretboard, moving around, not looking at the strings and being able to read the music is, is brilliant. It's, it's almost as if it's unlocking my ability to play the guitar because I prefer to read the music and... I was watching a video the other day, somebody actually sent me a link to this, to be fair, where one of the teachers was saying, what I want you to do is when you're playing this particular chord, I want you to think about the next chord whilst you're playing it. Where are you going to? And the analogy that he was using was stepping stones on a river. You know, you don't lift your foot off of a stepping stone without knowing where you're going to put your foot on the next stepping stone, otherwise you're going to be in the river. And if it's a raging torrent, you're dead. You know, you are always going to move when you know where you're going to land. And that's one of the things that I can do better when I'm reading the music. I can see where I'm going uh, where, uh, and not only just where I'm going with the next chord, but I can also think about the sequence, so where I'm going maybe two or three chords ahead and I can start to sort of gear up for that. Um, it is an additional skill that is obviously very necessary when you're playing the guitar and it's one that, that I'm finding easier than learning the chords. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something, being able to read the music, to look ahead, it does make things a lot easier and a lot more fluid rather than hunched over watching the strings and the other thing as well is um, and I felt myself a little bit hunched there it's not ideal when I'm on the camera but I am playing with the guitar more upright my back is more straight uh, my wrist is straighter everything just feels so much more relaxed when I'm not hunched over concentrating on the strings so I think that this skill of learning to play without looking at the strings both for your chords and for your picking hand. Yes, occasionally you need to look down and just reference where you are. But I'm finding that when I am playing without looking at the strings, things are so, so, so much easier. So much easier and it's something that I am definitely going to be concentrating on over the next week or so. Now hopefully we will be back with Michael face to face and we can look at a few other things and sort of move forward with Everybody Hurts and, and other songs as well. Uh, but for the moment, that is where I'm at. Just working on this wonderful song, Missing Strings, without looking at them and just trying to get things really, really clean. So anyway, thank you very much for watching and thank you to everybody that is continuing to subscribe and follow along. If you like this video, please hit the like button and if you're not already a subscriber, please consider hitting the subscribe button for um, notifications of more videos that I've got coming up. A couple of you have asked about the ME80 and in particular interfacing that to um, Reaper and a couple have mentioned Pro Tools. 
I did download Reaper a couple of days ago, haven't actually installed it yet, um, but I am looking at researching how that all fits together um, and I hope to do a video on that very soon. A couple of you have also mentioned that my videos, um, they, they put it together quite nicely, which is great. Thank you ever so much for that compliment. And some of you asked actually how I'm going about doing it. The gear that I'm using is very, very, very simple. Getting the video and the audio into the computer and getting them processed is very, very simple as well. So I'll probably do a video on my simple setup and then I have got a more complicated setup that um, I'm hoping to move to and I'll do more videos um, about that at the time. And I've been promising these videos for a while. So yeah, we're starting to do some research and I'll have those for you very soon. So hit the bell button so that you get notification of those as well. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, keep practicing and I'll see you on another video coming very soon. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this one. Bye bye.